How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Amatsusume. And in the last episode, we got to meet Kokoro's best friend, Hotaru, I think was her name. Bit of an interesting character, and uh, she is the one I want to learn more about. She had a little bit of a serious tone, and that's the first time, I think, since uh, uh, Makoto, our main character here, has come to this town, that we've seen a little bit of a strange tone. Everything has been pretty lighthearted, funny, haha, -ha, you know, oh, wow, everything is so pretty and cool for, you know, never seeing a location like this in his entire life. But she did have a serious tone, and I'm curious where that all, where that all could go in the future. So very, uh, very interested to see uh, when she'll pop up again. But it looks like our uh, our friend here is going to be going to school, something of which we aren't going to be doing. And, uh, I think this is where I, just about where I left off in my, in my first run. So I think this is going to be the first episode where I will be venturing blind. You won't have to see that little, uh, talisman or whatever the hell that is anymore on the text boxes will be a new territory for, uh, for myself. So let us jump right back in. I'm tidying up the cafe after breakfast when Kokoro comes down the stairs. She looks different. Hey, your clothes. She spreads her arms to give me a better look. Yes, you're very cute, Kokoro. Yeah, you look very cute in your uniform. Cute girls are even cuter when they're acting bashful. I looked down at her skirt. I didn't think western skirts would be this short in real life. At least skirts seem far less constricting than these jeans I've been wearing. But they're so short that the slightest movement would expose the underwear beneath. In some manga, they even draw that ha uh, drew that happening. And I guess exposing it must be intentional. Oh, I was just thinking girls probably wear short skirts to show off their underwear. <laughs> Be honesty. She's not usually so curt with me. Okay. I know. I wasn't thinking that at all. I kind of was. She's getting flustered at her own words. She even had X's for eyes. You never see that happen. Never. Truly, uh, truly a fascinating sight. See you later. She calls to the back of the house and then rushes out the door. Huh. Yeah, her skirt is just short enough that when she runs, I can almost just... I re my reverie is broken as Azuki-san comes out from her room. Oh, Yes, just now. Did she even eat? Do high schoolers even eat? I remember not eating back when I was in high school. Or at least for breakfast. And sometimes not lunch. Damn. Lunch was, uh... Like, you, you had to have some money for that. Or have those connections. Ah, America. She speaks calmly as she approaches in her fancy cafe uniform. Her skirt is much longer than Kokoro's. It seems she noticed me wordlessly gazing at her. It's nothing, sorry. Kokoro already told me not to talk to Azuki-san about skirts, so I decide not to press further. Yeah, let's just drop that, please. I look forward to it. I bow in gratitude. I can hardly believe it, but soon I'll be able to make my own pancakes and omurice. What a blessed day this will be. Today's a normal business day, so we have to serve customers. But there aren't many yet, so during her downtime, Azuki-san teaches me about how to use the kitchen. Pepper, ketchup, and mayonnaise. The stove that doesn't need firewood. And various other handy tools and items for cooking. I'm learning a lot of new things, and it's been so much fun that I've barely noticed the time passing. Before I know it, we've almost made it to lunchtime. <laughs> Suddenly, Azuki-san puts on a serious expression and nods gravely. 
We have been? Wait, we're already done? Oh, well, there, it's gone. Alright, new territory going forward. Thank you, Sensei. I bow deeply. Actually, that was pretty fast. Doesn't it usually take years to achieve mastery? She really does look disappointed. Maybe I should have tried to screw up more? True. I get her point. I've noticed that the customers usually pay more attention to Azuki-san than me, even if I'm the one serving them. Actually, I get the feeling that most of the customers come here specifically to see Azuki-san. In fact, she's profiting from it. Apparently, she allows customers to take a selfie with her only if they visit, a ca or they visit the cafe a certain number of times. Anyway, huh, doesn't look like any customers are showing up. She seems pretty relaxed herself. Do you mean mother? Well, that's too bad. But yeah, this is pretty boring. I've already finished sweeping, washing the dishes, prepping drink ingredients, and other such tasks. So there's really nothing to do. She brings up the topic suddenly. What do you mean? Yeah, she's been very nice to me. I'm not surprised. After I agree with her, I realize something. But to be honest, I still don't know how... Or I don't know how Kokoro that well. It could be that I'm misreading her. Is it? Is it really? There's gotta be something else to it. I don't understand. Doubt. Does that mean that Kokoro is an example of a good person? You don't seem very happy about that, though. <laughs> Uh-oh. I see what you mean. No, I think it's a natural line of thought to follow. Kind of like we were brother and sister. She's able to picture me as Kokoro's brother, despite knowing that Kokoro actually did have a brother, Azuki-san's still-born son. I think to myself, what if... Hmm. If having a male stranger like me living under her roof makes Azuki-san worry constantly, then what if I were to actually become part of her family? If I was a son to Azuki-san and a brother to Kokoro, then they wouldn't think anything of my gender or that I was living in their house. And if I made Kokoro my sister, it would be easier for me to avoid laying a finger on her, as Hotaru, as Hotaru put it, sorry, vowels. Uh, of course, if my presence ever became a danger to Kokoro, I would immediately rescind the Kotodama and leave town. That goes without saying. But she and Azuki-san saved my life, so I want them to feel as safe as possible and if they feel happier having a brother and a son in their lives, respectively, then all the better. Azuki-san is surprised at my sudden silence. I choose my words carefully and speak. A kotodama that lasts for a long period of time requires the speaker to concentrate deeply. I am he, I am he who speaks, bang but a word, boon but a word. I am your son. I am Kokoro's brother. 
I don't know how I feel about the direction this is going in. The first one seems to have taken effect, so she responds to the second Kododama as if I was saying something obvious. For a moment, a wave of dizziness washes over me. I've never used a Kododama that dug so deep into someone's mind. It feels like it really took something out of me. Well, uh, Mom? Nani? She smiles kindly at me without a hint of surprise at the way I called her. Never mind. I feel a little shy to call her Mom, but... More than that, I find it painful. I used the Kododama mainly for the benefit of the two of them, but I didn't realize how deeply it would affect me. A mother, a family, a mixture of nostalgia and longing stirs in my heart. I feel like diving into her arms, but this relationship isn't real. I have to remember to behave properly and not to go overboard. Azuki-san suddenly realizes something. Um, I'm, I contracted a contagious disease and had to live far away for a long time, but now I'm cured, so I came back. To avoid too many inconsistencies, I make up a half-truth based on the real epidemic that swept the village when I was young. She doesn't seem to understand, but the implanted belief that I'm her son doesn't allow her to question what I'm saying. I don't want to interfere with people's memories or wills too much. All I need to do now is scatter a few Kododamas on regular customers and people in the neighborhood, and the rest will work itself out by word of mouth. Me too. I nod. I'm glad I was able to come back home. It'll just be until the end of summer. I've decided that's how long I'll continue this charade. I don't know if I like where this is going. You know that phrase or that idea where the more you lie, the harder it is to retain that lie? The, so basically, the, the further you throw into false stories and such, it's, it's just going to topple over. At some point, you're going to have an inconsistency and it's going to fuck everything up. I'm kind of worried about that because that's more or less what this is. For now, it's back to work at the, as the lunchtime rush arrives. If a customer asks me about myself, I give them a self-introduction with a little Kododama thrown in. If they ask Azuki-san about me, they usually believe her by default, and a Kododama isn't even necessary. And just like that, now I'm Oribe Makoto, son of Oribe Azuki and brother of Oribe Kokoro. As lunchtime comes to a close, Azuki-san takes a break and returns to her room, and I'm left by myself out on the cafe floor. All that's left is Kokoro, I guess. I pour some hot cocoa for myself as I watch for customers. I'm sure things will work themselves out somehow. Around 3 p.m., Kokoro shows up. Welcome back. Oh, shit. <laughs> An unexpected character appears behind her. Hotaru. Well, that isn't good. Or wait, maybe... Ac actually, maybe it is. Or is it? Because there's a possibility that she can't be affected by Kododama. Or at least she wasn't the day prior when we met her. Kokoro isn't the only one who will need a Kododama put on her. Anyone she's already told about me will need one put on them, too. That includes Hotaru. Not only did Kokoro tell her about me, but she's even met me in person. Still, there's no need to hurry. Do you two want anything to drink? Barley, tea, and lemonade. Got it. Both of those are easy to make. You just gotta pour them into a glass. First, I push a glass of barley tea over to Kokoro. There you go. She shakes it a bit, rattling the ice, and then takes a sip, then presses the cold glass against her cheek. Next, it's Hotaru's turn. I pour the lemonade expertly into the glass and place it in front of her with my best smile. Your lemonade, ma'am, please enjoy and let me know if there's anything else you need. Shizuka ni tatte ru dake no hito no hou ga muite ru no ka mo. Sokka. 
誠くん口数は多くないし Will you two be hanging out in the cafe for a while, or did you have any other plans? I assume they were either going to go upstairs to Kokoro's room or head out somewhere again. Thanks. I'm fine though. Now, Azuki san's resting in her room right now. Proper? What do you mean? I guess, but also, wouldn't that annoy the customers? Are they, though? Are they really? Yeah, exactly. What? I'm not sure why, but Hotaru is looking at me uh, audibly. Uh, didn't you already get a good long look at me yesterday? They are? Every day? That sounds tiring. Uh, that sounds more reasonable. Kokoro is standing at the counter and sipping her barley tea. It's fun to chat with the two of them like this, but I should do the deed before Azuki san comes back. I'd like to tell both of you something important. Hey, you know, I'm down, you know, just see where things go. You're right. I'd find it hard to choose one of you over the other since you're both very cute. Why shouldn't I be? Is there any need to beat around the bush when I want to tell a girl she looks cute? Okay, so place your bets, gamers. Will this work on both of them? I mean, it, it's, it's a likeliness it's going to work on Kokoro because everything so far has worked on her and everybody else. It's Hotaru that I'm very, very curious about. I say it suddenly. I figure it might work better if they don't see it coming. They both seem to be at a loss for words. Before I can tell whether it worked, I quickly find out that it did a number on me and I suddenly feel exhausted. Ooh. Hotaru speaks first. It doesn't work on her. It straight up does not work on her. We can't use Kododama on her. Huh? She's staring at me in surprise. But the surprise seems to come naturally from our conversation, not from anything deeper. Close your eyes. She doesn't close her eyes, instead she widens them even further. I mean, I'm down. Yeah, my Kododama isn't working on her. This has never happened to me before. Crap, what should I do? The power of Kododama doesn't just work on normal people like Kokoro. It works on other Kododama users too. In fact, a Kododama user can even use it on themselves if they concentrate hard enough. I know that we Kododama users are special, but being immune to Kododama must be something even more special. Who on earth is she? Oh no. It worked on her. <laughs> oh no. Oh fuck. God damn it. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh, I knew this was a bad idea. Suddenly, Kokoro interrupts our staring contest. Nisan? Nisan? We both react to the same part of what Kokoro said. Ah, this was such a bad idea. I don't like this anymore. I don't. I don't like. I don't like this choice. I, I never did like his choice. I've never heard that one before. 
さん、兄さん、兄さん、ね。Ah,、oh, fuck. She's having fun saying Nissan in various different ways. It's clear that my Kotodama is working perfectly on her. Yesterday, I thought I might have misspoken, but this time I know I said it right. So why on earth isn't it working on Hotaru? Hotaru is shocked too, but for a different reason than I am. Hotaru, what are you saying? Yeah, 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 I need to talk with Hotaru for a bit. I'll be right back.、Oh? As I grab her arm, she raises her eyebrows. Alright. I wasn't going to. So, so, so,、uh, don't talk, please. <laughs> What the fuck?、Huh? What the hell? Oh my god. Everything's just falling apart. It's great. I think I heard something kind of odd just now. But anyway, dealing with Hotaru comes first. I'll be back in about an hour. Kokoro, can you handle the cafe while I'm gone? Huh? I don't reply as I'm already out the door with Hotaru in tow. Ah,、oh, shit. What are we gonna do now? I don't want to have our conversation here on the side of the road with people nearby, so I decide to head to the lakeshore. お兄さん、内緒のお話がしたいなら、この辺りでいいと思いますよ。Keep your mouth shut. ホタルはさっきからずっと黙っています。You really talk a lot. マコトさん、たまに命令形で何かを言いますけど、女に偉そうにしたいとか、そういう感じではないですね。何か意図があって、きつい言葉を使ってます Clearly, she's been observing me just as closely as I've been observing her. What should I do? No, there's no way for me to wing it this time. I've lived my whole life thinking I could use my Kododama to talk my way out of any situation. And it wasn't just me. That was how everyone thought back in the village. I never even dreamed that there might be people on whom Kododama didn't work, and nobody in the village ever taught me otherwise. So I just don't have the life experience needed to be deceitful or sneaky. I'll. I'll tell you everything. I felt a sense of resignation for the first time in my life. I have the ability to use a special power called Kododama. When I speak a command or a declaration out loud, anyone who hears my voice will be affected by what I say. Yeah. Why is she. Why is she like so engaged in on this? Yeah. She taps her index finger against her lips as she thinks about it. Right. Yes. Her voice sounds as light and cheery as ever, but something tells me I'm not allowed to refuse her request. I tell her the whole story, not just what I initially told Kokoro and Azuki san, but also the part about how our clan inherited the power of Kododama from our mountain god ancestors. So She's still as lighthearted as ever, it seems. To be honest, I expected a different reaction. To me, Kododama is normal, but I figured to someone like you, finding out about it would be kind of a shock. She looks away, thinking over what I've said. マコトさんはこのままココロンとアズキさんに家族だと思わせたいんだ
Yeah. Okay. That's it? Could it really be this easy? Uh, don't you want anything in return for keeping it a secret? Well, I mean, I thought that normally people wouldn't be so accepting after learning the truth. If this is the reaction I get, then why were we all living in a remote village isolated from civilization? Not everybody's this nice, buddy. They always taught me that if people found out about our Kododama, they'd try to use it or use us for their own selfish ends, but this... So it's just your curiosity then. You're right, it was. Right. I thought it would help if I became their family member, putting us in an officially plato uh, platonic relationship, excuse me. Princess powers? I still can't stop thinking about how my Kododama didn't work on Hotaru. Is it just her who has resistance to it? Or maybe there's some small minority of humans who are all immune to it. Sit down. I had to try it again just in case, but Hotaru stays standing. Man, it really doesn't work on you. She's taken aback. Really? To me, it doesn't really feel like a power. It's no different from moving my arms and legs. Not really. I guess if I say an especially strong Kodadama, it tires me out a little. Her hair bounces as she shakes her head from side to side. I mean, it could just be the latter. Uh, those don't really sound like things I would want. <laughs> I knew you were secretly jealous. Sure, but it doesn't even work on you. What's up with that? Fuck yeah. I want to know more about this character because she's been the most mysterious so far. Well, I guess minus that shrine maiden we came across, but... No, I mean, this this honestly seems like the person I really want to know more about. Do you have a shocking secret too, Hotaru? Uh, well, what's, uh, what's one of them? That's a lot. I guess she's right. I don't think it works that way. Apparently, it's something you're either born with or not. Yeah, that's what I learned in the village anyway. She's grinning happily, but I'm puzzled. I mean, if I'm right, it means you'll never be able to use Kododama. So why are you so happy about it? Yeah, it is. She's so optimistic, I can't help but argue. Or agree, excuse me. Yesterday you said Kokoro was pure-hearted. But I can see you have a pure heart too, Hotaru. I don't really tell jokes, Hotaru. I've noticed that she really smiles a lot of the time. Even when she's saying something kind of harsh, she does it with a grin. Yes. 
通ってみたいと。Yes, I did. じゃあ行こうか。Go where? <笑>学園、通いたいんでしょあ、心に連絡しておかないと。Before I can say anything more, she takes out her cell phone and starts typing a text. That sounds sus, but okay. I do want to attend school, but what do you have in mind? Yeah. Well,、uh, I guess I'd have to do some research first, but. She holds up her index finger admonishingly. Wow, that's just the kind of gesture I imagine city girls might use. Hmm. I was vaguely planning to ask Kokoro and Azuki san for, er, for help with figuring the school stuff out, but that would make them start wondering why I had never gone to school before. In the first place, I don't even know what knowledge about the outside world I'm still missing. Having someone who knows my real background could really help. Well, that sounds very helpful, thank you. She starts trying to walk away. Uh. Well, um, I know you didn't want anything in return, but I'd still like to do something to pay you back if possible. Is there anything I can't do? Hotaru's smile vanishes at my answer. A look of distaste flashes across her face. Hmm. Is that jealousy? No. I don't know. We walk up the same road Kokoro led me down、uh, yesterday. And there's the school. Soon we arrive at the front gates of the school. It's as big as I remember it being yesterday. Makoto san, hayaku ikimasu yo. Wait a minute. I want to take a good look, or a good long look. Hora, hora, inaka mono demo. Ah, takai tatemono miyagetere to inaka mono ni omore so. Te, yoke na kyo tsukau mono nan desu kara. Well, I am unsophisticated. Kotoba o sono mama uke tora nai de kudasai. It doesn't come very easily to me. I smile uncomfortably. Okay, so what should I do now? Hotaru starts doing something with her phone. Year? Oh, right, the thing where students are divided according to their age. ね、What's the difference? I'll leave it up to you. はい、はい、I wait for a while as she continues typing on her phone. Then I hear my own phone receive a text. I'm going to go to the house. Except as a special case, Oribe Makoto's immediate transfer as of tomorrow. Take care of all necessary paperwork. Do not investigate Oribe Makoto's background or history in any way. The sentences continue, each more incomprehensible than the last. Okay. And she's really getting the hang of this. She's even using the brackets. 隣が学園長さんのお部屋
She carefully takes a quick peek into the staff room. <laughs> what happened? That'll make things simple. You're not coming with me? Oh, I guess I'll just have to go in by myself then. I open the door of the staff room and go inside. I introduce myself as Orebe Makoto and read out Hotaru's text message to, this two, to the two staff members. Excuse me. Then I come back out. Okay, I'm done. It was easy. All I had to do was read your text, uh, your text message to them. Actually, since I didn't understand most of the text message, I didn't want to risk rewording it in case I said something wrong. I'm supposed to come back to the staff room tomorrow morning. Actually, won't I need a uniform? A frown appears on her face. Well, yes, I thought we established that. You thought it wasn't real? Scary. She doesn't answer, returning to my earlier question instead. Bye, so I'll need money? Now it's my turn to frown. The cash I brought with me from the village turned out not to be very much money, so I'm unsure of how best to use it. That's a crime, isn't it? She takes out her phone and starts composing another text. I haven't checked recently. She puts her hand on her head and then slides it horizontally through the air towards me. When it touches me, it's below my neckline. How tall are you, Hotoru? Okay, I can't do the, the quick conversion. Yet another reason why our measuring system, along with many other things in America, makes no goddamn sense. She seems displeased at the question, though I don't know why she would be. Her height is part of why she's so cute. Yes. Hotaru puts, her, puts away her phone. Who did you send the text to? Oh yeah, I remember Kokoro said that Hotaru's family owned the hospital in the town. Thanks. A man, probably a teacher, appears at the end of the hallway, walking in our direction. What? She stops and looks up at me. Probably, though I've never used it that many times in a row. In the village, we barely spoke at all, let alone used Kododama. Though I've learned to speak more freely here even now, uh, Kododamas don't exactly flow from my mouth. Oh, this is the one that's gonna make us bleed through our nose and pass on out. Sure. Well, you're being... You've been really helpful to me, and I did say I wanted to pay you back. So if you want me to do something, just say the word. You mean you want to be the ruler of the whole world? So, so. Huh. Empress Hotaru. I like it, I'm in. As we're chatting, the teacher continues his approach, and now he's spotted us. Well, I think I can guess what Hotaru wants. Basically, she doesn't want the teacher to find her hanging out with me. With me and my street clothes. You can't see the two of us. I keep the Kododama pretty simple. The teacher suddenly squints, confused, but keeps walking. Soon he's gone past where we're standing. Hotaru watches him silently. Then, trying to signal that we should leave, she taps me on the chest. 
what are you doing? She heaves a sigh and starts walking away. As she goes, I hear her mutter to herself. Come on. Meathead. I'm more experienced with agriculture than animal husbandry, really. Suddenly she stops and turns to me. Her expression is serious as she gazes into my eyes. It's the same kind of piercing look she gave me yesterday at the lake shore when she asked me what color I was. Oh no, this shit is really gonna fuck things up, I'm sure. Frightening. I wait, hoping for clarification, but Hotaru makes no reply. She begins walking again, and I follow behind her. Yeah, we could really make a mess of things. Like, people's memories, their emotions, all of that could be in complete disarray. But we will end the episode there, as we are on Kokoro 3. And uh, I guess these are all the characters up here. I, I think... Kyoko is the shrine maiden that we saw. Mana, we know her. Hotaru, we're following her around. And hey, there's us, kinda, I think. I don't know. And whoever others are. Um, I don't know what selecting these do, and I'm kind of afraid to if you can even do so. So I'm not gonna do any of that. Uh, but anyways, thank you all for watching this episode. I kinda like how we're following Hotaru around. Again, as I said in the beginning of the episode, very curious about her. Um, but let me ask this question, because I never paid too much attention to the title card. Who's the main female character? Is it Kokoro? Is it Hotaru? Is everybody, like, equally important in a way? Or is everything going to kind of loop back around to Kokoro because she's the one that found us? Uh. But either way, I'm cool with, you know, everybody getting their screen time. And I, I think what the game will do, in typical visual novel fashion is allow us to pick a route later down the line, which I am 100% cool with as long as all the characters are able to remain somewhere in the story. That's something that usually bugs me with routes, but I think this title will do a good job, and from what I've been told, it will also destroy me emotionally. I can't wait for all that, so... Uh, yeah, again, we'll end it here. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and next time we'll, uh, I guess we're going to fucking school. Yeehaw!